Hi there, Blaze here. Thanks for joining another devlog video of my Space Shooter mobile game project. It's been a while from previous recording. I enjoyed my holiday and also did some other stuff, but now I'm back. As you can see, the project is a little bug and errors are coming from nowhere. So let's finally fix it. I wanted to start easily, so I got my iPad and started drawing some other connections for my background, because some of tiles often have empty references when generating the work. After about an hour, I saw what the wrong decision this was. I created a template for every possible connection, and as you can see, my sprite sheet doubled in size. So finally, I rejected the idea of drawing additional connections, and I need to think more about it in upcoming days. Because this January was the warmest in my country for several dozen years, I spent some free time on outside sports, also on riding a bike. Good to meet nature after a cold winter. I hope that I will have more time for cycling this year. Maybe you remember these stupid lines which flickers around tile edges. This was really frustrating because there should not be this kind of problem with tiles which are pixel perfect. So I decided to finally fix this bug and I did it by creating sprite atlas for my entire sprite sheet. This is a little strange, but it works, so okay. Second half of the Tuesday and entire Wednesday I spent on improving my unit test system for validating serialized fields. I want to check every field if it's set before the game will start, but using onValidate I will get messages also when prefabs are in asset database instead of scene. This is why I designed my own validation system and let me show you how it works. Let's say a background generator and you have serialized field here, first tile tile set, which is a list, or serialized field tile map, which is type of tile map. Here I have another attribute, skill validation, which means that this field will not be checked if asset is uh, in asset database instead of scene. Let's go to Unity and we have background generator here. As you can see, we have tile map set here and we have our first tile tile set set here. If I launch background generator test, which is here, run selected, I will have past test because all fields are set and I now remove this list and set the scene and run again. I have failed test because serialized field list is empty. This is what is checked if serialized list is empty or if field is another type it is checked if it's null. So we have source so I know that this is on scene and we have prefab location controller so we can go to location controller component background generator which is here and field first tile tile set which is of course here. So we go to revert these fields. I will show you how it looks in asset database. We have prefab and we we don't have tile map field set. So when I run selected test, now I also have failed test because serialized field is not set. And now source is asset database. So I need to search in project, not in hierarchy. Prefab location controller, component background generator, and also field tile map, which is not set. This field cannot be set from, from prefab because it refers to object on scene. As you can see, it refers to tile map. So I can't set this in prefab and this is where I use my skip validation attribute and this is now skip. Running this test again will result in test pass. Thursday and Friday I have a little time so I just do a little cleanup in my code. I removed unused script and also get used to with all to-do comments in my code. I also fix some console errors and plan work for the next weeks. On Wednesday I spent a while on designing optimization for my background generator. It's always easier to design changes when you have some drawings even if they are as simple as mine. So next I implemented these changes on Thursday and at the moment seems like background generator doesn't draw any errors. It is implemented to do more tries or even back to previous lines if some tiles are not fitting another, so I also added debug logs for editor and development builds because I want to test how much time I need to generate this word. On my Mac it takes about 2 seconds. In the future we will test this on phone also. Depending on this time I will probably implement something like loading progress bar. Welcome on Friday, I started with something easy to implement, I changed the color of background a little because they were too bright and blends with spaceships and bullets. This was also suggested in comment section by one of you, so if you have more ideas you can write them below. I always read and approve some of them.
thanks for entire feedback. And we finally get to the end of 0.9.3 milestone. This background generator implementation took really much time. So for a few weeks I was working mainly on this, but for now it's done and I can move to milestone 0.10 and focus on creating playable switch level also with music. But because the week is going to end, we will do this in next devlog. So for now it's all. That was a quick update from last two weeks. Subscribe to not miss the next video and see you soon. Bye!